Hey guys, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. If you're new here, my name is Lauren and I am a full-time kindergarten teacher. And I also flip furniture on the side in order to earn a profit that I put straight toward my student loan debt. Today, I am going to bring you another mismatched dresser and nightstand set. And I'm also gonna be bringing back the lovely Rust-Oleum smoked glaze. So I am going to get to taking off the hardware, but first I wanna tell you a little bit about the numbers. I got this big guy for 50 at Goodwill, and usually I don't spend 50 at Goodwill, but I loved this dresser. It was in really nice shape. The hardware is going to be perfect with the look I'm going for. And then these two nightstands, I was at a different Goodwill and we were about to leave, but then they said 65% off. And my mom and I went back and we actually ended up buying like six or seven pieces of furniture, three sets of nightstands and one dresser. So it was crazy. But anyway, I got these for $7 a piece. So we're in at $64 here and let's take off the hardware. So I am gonna be actually replacing this hardware here on the wooden ones to match the ones that are on the taller dresser. And it's crazy because I was at the ReStore and I love looking for hardware there and I found the exact same knobs that are on the big dresser and so I'm gonna put them on here as well. I'm gonna be keeping this hardware because you never know when you might need some. I always recommend keeping old hardware if you are replacing, because you never know, like I could come across a dresser that's missing one of these knobs and then I needed it. I'm just gonna go ahead and take the drawers out because I'm gonna be taking them out to clean anyway. Hardware is all off, so we're gonna clean both the dresser and the nightstands. So I am going to clean with my super clean. And again, you want to clean with a degreaser because there's gonna be tons of oils and just dirt and you don't know what because it's a person's old dresser and plus it was at a thrift store. The other reason that you should clean is because you want your paint to adhere to the piece of furniture. So that's a double reason. So all the more reasons to clean. Even cleaning the inside um, along here, there's a lot of dust that gets caught up in there. So you know, if this is going to a new person, think about it. Would you want someone else's yuck? Even though I'm not painting in here, I wanna get all that clean. And now we're gonna glove up because this is a chemical cleaner and so we wanna protect our skin. So my initial wipe down is finished 
And now the reason I have a double bucket is because I'm gonna have my dirty water stay on this side, but then I've got some clean water with a new clean rag. And then I'm going to go back over all of that. And then I am going to wipe away any leftover dust, but then also any leftover cleaner. The reason we want to get all the cleaner off is because if it leaves any residue again, it makes the paint not adhere as much to the surface of the piece, but rather it would adhere to that cleaning residue. And that is not what we want. Okay, take a look at this dirty water. Okay, so this was the original clean, and then even the second clean still is a little bit dirty. So again, that shows you why we need to clean before we paint. My next step is going to be filling some of these hardware holes. I know I said that I was going to be using the same hardware for the top or for the taller dresser. However, I am going to be filling some holes from the smaller dressers and also the top dresser drawer because I'm going to be replacing that so that I can kind of make them more cohesive. So I will show you what I mean, but first I'm just going to show you how easy it is to fill some holes. So I'm going to be using my Dixie mud to fill in these holes. And honestly, I haven't found a better wood filler style product than this Dixie mud. It really just is so smooth and so it just is so easy to work with and it goes right in and fills up the hole so sometimes you do need to do two different applications because it sinks in but that's fine um, because it dries really fast as well but then also I tell this every time but I do like to just do a little bit taller than the actual hole that way when I go back and sand it back it'll be really easy to keep even. So I'm gonna be replacing the knobs on the top drawer of the dresser and then the top two drawers, or the top one drawer of both nightstands. There were four knobs on these top drawers of the nightstands and that's just a lot. And so I'm gonna replace it with just one and it's gonna be a handle instead of a knob. Okay, holes are filled and I don't have any gouges that I need to fill on the tops of any of these. So next step is we've just gotta let this dry and then we'll do some sanding. All right, we're out here ready to sand. I've got my orbital sander, 120 grit sandpaper because I'm actually just gonna be scuff sanding. I'm not gonna be going down to any raw wood areas. This one is actually not real wood. It's particle board, but it's really great quality particle board. And then there are two nightstands and those are solid wood. But again, I'm not going down. I'm just scuff sanding so that the paint can adhere. And I'm gonna wear my mask so that I can protect myself. So let's get started. Hey, we've got a couple of more drawers to sand. I've got to go check and see if the Dixie mud is dry. I actually did have to add another layer of that. So that's been drying for a good amount of time. So I'm going to go check and see if that's dry. All 
Well, some spots are drier than others, but overall it's not quite ready. So I'm gonna get to priming on all of the other pieces and then we'll come back and finish the sand on these. We're gonna move these over here because we're actually gonna be trying some spray primer today. Spray can primer. I just want to try it out. I've heard that it makes things a lot easier, so I figured why not? For these nightstands, I'm going to be using the Bin Zinzer Primer Shellac Base because I want to block any stains that may come through. Again, with the wood pieces, I kind of scuff sanded it, but I went below the color. So that means that those colors are still gonna probably pop through the original or the paint color that I am going to paint it, especially because I'm doing white. So we're gonna use the stain blocker with shellac to block those in. And I'm not really good at opening. <laughs> Oh, I did it. Okay. So also one of my generous viewers, our supporters, bought me this from my Amazon wish list, and it's actually a spray paint can holder that makes it just so much easier to continuously spray instead of hurting your finger. Uh, this is my first time trying it out, so let's see how this goes. There we go. Okay. Seems about right. <laughs> Let's try it out. <laughs> well, first of all, that was so fast. And second of all, my finger doesn't hurt. This is amazing. <sighs> okay, on to the next one. Okay, so was this a lot faster? Yes. However, I feel like I used a lot. Like with the brush on, those cans are like $14 maybe, and this is like eight bucks. And I just feel like the can will go a lot farther. This saved me a lot of time though, so it might be worth it. Um, I'll keep experimenting, but I just wanted to try it out for me and for you guys. It works. We're gonna prime the bigger dresser with some different primer because it's not going to bleed through the paint that I paint on top white. It doesn't need the shellac base, again, because it's particle board. So we're gonna go on to that one now. The heck? Spraying weird. I don't know. It, it's almost as if it wasn't pressing down on it fully. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's pushing down on the edge and it's not fully. Like there's still plenty in here, but it's not spraying out. And the pressing smack dab in the middle. I haven't changed like. Did your 
Yeah. Hey, it's working. It's like goes in spurts. Am I doing something wrong? I swear, it's just this can of spray paint. I'm not gonna let this deter me from trying again, <laughs> but this feels like it was an epic fail with this can. The other can was great, but let's go check and see if the Dixie mud is dry, but. All right, it's dry, let's sand it down. How's that working for you? Not. <laughs> well, this thing needs to be upside down, so I don't understand. See? This is so frustrating. I just need this last drawer. Nothing wants to work. I'm calling that good. It's okay. I promise I'll give it another shot on another project, but right now that really frustrated me. Anyway, we're gonna let this primer dry for a while and then I will come back and do a light sanding to smooth everything out and then we'll get to painting. Primer is all dry, so we are gonna do a light sanding. I got 150 grit sandpaper, and we're gonna sand it down just to even out and smooth out those primer before we put the paint on. You wanna do this whenever you prime, but I'm noticing a lot that the spray paint made it a little bit extra rough. There's not gonna be those brush strokes like if you used a brush, but still that texture needs to be smoothed out. And even though that was just a sanding, light sanding, there's gonna be some dust. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a microfiber cloth and rub all that dust away. Like I told you guys, Rust-Oleum Smoked Glaze is back. That, as you know, is the last step though. The first step is we've got to paint the bases and the drawers of these dressers and this dresser and nightstands white so i'm going to be using rust-oleum's linen white today to paint these pieces it has been a while since i have done this style of furniture here on the channel but also in general it's been since february i didn't do this at all in march but this look is selling like hotcakes in my area so i've got to continue doing it and plus you guys really love it so again when you find a style that goes well in your market why change it up if you enjoy doing it continue to do it because you know it's gonna sell when i first started out painting furniture i was using this same paint and it was pretty thick and i never really thought to water it down a little bit but as i've grown and learned some things i know that adding a little bit of water with a spritzer or a mister or any sort of spray bottle will help your paint smoothly go and glide across your surface so that is why i'm going to be adding some water to both my surface my brush and a little bit to the paint If 
If you don't have a spritzer bottle, you can always just add some water to your paint in a different container. Now you wanna be careful, you don't wanna to add too much, but that's what I did before I got a spritzer, so that's another option. I'll link the spritzer down below. It's actually from Dixie Bell. It's a continuous mister. It really does the job nicely. And I'm using zebra brush today. And this is the two inch angle, the short handle. I love zebra brushes as well. Link can also be found down below. These brushes are affordable. They can be found online or at Home Depot. So check them out as well. Okay, all finished up with coat number one of the white. This is gonna dry for just a little while longer and then I'll start back on the other end with coat number two. Yes, only two coats are needed. That is all finished up. So now we get to do the gray on the tops. So now that we're finished up with the white, we are on to the next step, which is the gray. The gray, the aged gray from Rust-Oleum is a lighter gray, and that's gonna go on the tops of both nightstands and the dresser. And then we'll get to your favorite part, the smoked glaze. I'm gonna be using the same technique that I used for the white paint with using the spray bottle and a zebra brush. This one is the two and a half inch zebra brush, the angled brush. And I've never used this one before, but it's just a little bit bigger. We'll probably also need two coats of the gray on top. You wanna be careful, <laughs> unlike I am, you wanna be careful not to get it on the white. I know I should tape, but I'm too lazy sometimes. All right, coat number two is all finished up with both nightstands and this tall dresser. So my next step is going to be to head to the drawers and to do a little bit of distressing, and then we'll come back and do the smoke glaze on the top. So with distressing, I'm just gonna be taking my hand sander here with 120 grit sandpaper, and then I'm gonna be rubbing back some of the paint. And distressing just gives it a little extra character. I'm basically gonna be taking some paint off, giving it a little bit of wear and tear look. And I'm gonna do it on the natural areas on 
things um, that might get bumped uh, without me distressing. I'm just gonna do that before that happens. For example, the corners of the drawers, the edges of the drawers, things like that. Those are more naturally gonna get bumped. So that's where I'm gonna focus on distressing. I'm not gonna be going in the middle here. We also don't wanna go overboard, so something like that is perfect. Distressing is all finished up, so let's get the top coat on. Okay, so top coat, I always use some sort of sponge brush, whether it's the sponge from Dixie Belle, the blue one, or a sponge brush. It just really makes it easier for the top coat to go on, in my opinion. And so, I'm gonna be using the matte clear top coat from Rust-Oleum. And I'm just gonna be spreading this along the drawers and everywhere because this will give it that protecting layer after the paint is all dry. Jeez. <laughs> Oops. It's okay, it's just top coat. It won't stain, but oops. It's time for the smoked glaze. Your favorite part, my favorite part, let's do it. So what you're gonna need for the smoked glaze is a brush and the smoked glaze and a lint-free cloth or even a paper towel will work. All right, so what we're gonna do is I am going to be using my brush to brush it onto the top of the gray. And you don't only have to use gray, but in order to get this specific look that I am showing you, I would recommend using this aged gray. And you're gonna brush it on, cover the whole area that you want to have the look on. Kinda do it quickly so that it doesn't dry before you can wipe it back. You can also do it in sections, but I find for the most part, it's better to do it all at once to get the most cohesive look when you wipe it back. So now that that is all on there, I'm actually just going to kind of coat my lint-free cloth with a little bit. And I'm doing this, this is the first time I'm doing this, but because usually the first time I use it with a dry one, it takes away a lot. And then once I do the other ones, it makes those ones darker because it's already got some on there. So I'm gonna try this and basically I'm just gonna wipe it back and I'm gonna go in one direction, back and forth, all along the edges. And then I'm just gonna check to make sure I wiped enough back everywhere. And there we've got it, our smoked glaze top. Let's do the second one. Same thing. We're gonna brush it on. All right, and then I'm going to wipe it back. Okay, let's do the big dresser now.
Alrighty, the tops are finished and then we're gonna let the smoked glaze dry for a little bit um, until I do the top coat on the tops. And in the meantime, I am going to be drilling some holes in the dresser drawers so that I can add on the new hardware. So as I told you before, I am going to be using the old hardware on the tall dresser and then I ended up finding some others at the Reese store that matched for the nightstands. However, I just needed a couple of more so I ended up filling some holes and in order to make all of it cohesive, I'm going to be replacing the hardware of the top drawer of the dresser and the top drawers of both nightstands. I graciously got some hardware the other day from a supporter and I just want to say thank you guys again for always checking out my Amazon list and so I'm excited this is one of the first times I'm able to use some hardware that one of you guys have sent me so I'm gonna measure and drill some new holes in the top drawers so I heard about this trick for um, drilling holes for new hardware is to put some tape down and then when you drill your holes it won't make everything go everywhere so I'm gonna try it out and hopefully it'll help me get everything straight as well so these are three inch handles so I am going to measure right here is my middle point I did see another youtuber diy wife have this tool where you can set it for the inches that your hardware is and then you just drill it right down so i am definitely going to be looking into getting one of those because i absolutely hate trying to measure and match it up and all of the above so i'm definitely gonna be looking into that but i think we've got it pretty good here Uh, I don't know, it still made everything go everywhere. <laughs> I don't know what the point of that was, but I think something, one thing cool is I'll just use this over here and then I'll know it'll be exactly right. Let's see if that's gonna fit. All right, those holes are drilled. Let's go on to the nightstand drawers. I think my drill died. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my gosh, I cannot catch a break. Gotta go get my other drill. Oh. Okay, got the other one. One more drawer. What is the problem? I don't know. Am I doing something wrong? I swear. Jeez. Okay, let's put the hardware on. So that does it for the hardware. Uh, gave me a run for my money at first, but we got it all figured out. Next step is the top coat on the tops and then we'll get to staging and photos.
Well, it's out of here. We did stage it and we did take photos. We just didn't get to record it. And three hours after I posted this for sale on Facebook Marketplace for $340, it was sold and I had money in my Venmo account. And the person actually came and got it that same night and it was 9.30 at night. They were just really eager to get it home. And so let's review some of the numbers from this set. So for the tall dresser, I got that at Goodwill for $50. And then the two nightstands, $7 each at a different Goodwill. So we're in at $64 on just the furniture alone. And then the primer and the paint and all that good stuff, all materials, I spent about $26 on. So we are in at about $90. And thank you again to one of my viewers who bought those handles for me. I didn't have to spend anything on that new hardware. So $90 and then sold it for $340. So that gives us a total profit of $250 that I'm gonna put straight toward my student loan debt. I hope you guys enjoyed this mismatched furniture set. These are some of my favorite things to do. And really, once they're all painted alike, they didn't even look like they were supposed to be mismatched. Be on the lookout for mismatching different dressers and nightstands because if you can sell a set, you're going to get a little bit of a more profit than if you were to just sell single items. So comment down below if you guys are into mismatched sets. Have you guys ever done something like that? What do you guys like to sell in your area? Is it nightstands and dressers? Is it something else? I'd love to know. And of course, get subscribed down below if you haven't already. Follow along on our journey. We've got some really exciting things coming. Summer is coming in just a couple of months. So you know what that means for me as a teacher. And check us out over on Instagram at Furniture Flipping Teacher because we're always sharing behind the scenes. And then we even go a little bit more in depth with our community over there. Yesterday I posted something that really inspired Neiman and I. And so if you want to go check that out over on Instagram. And we've got three days left for you to order a See You on the Flip Side shirt. So if you haven't already, of course, head down below. There is a link in the description and I'll see you on the flip side.